Matt, thank you for joining us on Trade Finance Talks TV. You're welcome, Dimash. So if you could start with, who are you, where are you from, and what do you do? So uh, Matthew Beckett, I'm a Director of Insurance Placement at SMBC E here in EMEA, uh, where I oversee the Credit Risk Insurance Placement Team for EMEA, but also with uh, Global Oversight. Uh, I've been at SMBC eight and a half years, and I have 10 plus years of uh, being a Credit Risk Insurance buyer. So why do insurers work with trade finance in the industry? Um, I think trade finance has always, always been part of an insurer's um, product palette in terms of political and credit risks. Um, and then also they're following their clients. So we as a bank, we've, we've worked with insurers for a good number of years. Trade finance is embedded within the institution. Uh, and we're originating in areas of the world where we can provide perhaps access for maybe new markets for insurers, but also insurers to, to complement their existing books of business. We know insurers like diversity. Uh, they, they will, they'll be heavy in some areas and perhaps our book provides some diversity, whether that's by product type or, or by country. Great. So what are the current challenges and opportunities within the trade credit insurance space? Um, I think we've, we've actually gone through quite a, a stable 2019, I would say. Um, I think the, the challenges are, as a rule, there are more people competing in this market. That goes for insurers as it does banks. Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably not, not only just banks who are looking to, to finance those flows, um, but in, in terms of credit, risk, credit insurers context, um, I think the challenges arise from how, how this business can be, be worked through over the longer term. It's, very, it's, it's short term in nature. It's quite um, labor intensive. There's a lot of flow. Um, so the challenge is how we can how, how how can we scale the business to make it more efficient? Creating those efficiencies may create more appetite and therefore additional capacity coming in from carriers who perhaps traditionally haven't looked at trade finance for those very reasons that it's perhaps too short term in nature. And I guess from an appetite perspective, have you seen any changes given the current geopolitical and macroeconomic events? Um, I think insurers actually remain pretty committed to the class the class of business. Um, you you could argue that the commodity cycle this year has actually been quite flat so we're not looking at 2015-16 uh, for example oil in Nigeria where there was a distinct change in appetite and that goes for lenders as it does insurers. Um, insurers in the main seem committed to the business flows we are originating um, but you know we never we never know what is around the corner and I think the, you know, the proof of the product and the proof of the relationship is how we can continue to transact through those dips in the cycle, um, as we you know, as, as we have tended to do in the in the years gone by. Mm. And so, from a distribution perspective, have there been any changes? Given that we've seen a number of non-bank lenders come onto the scene, and has this had any impact on the trade credit insurance market? Um, whether it's had an impact on the credit risk insurance market, I'm not sure. I think for us, any additional liquidity is kind of complementary to the extent that's becoming competition to us in terms of originates business, then obviously there, there is a challenge. Um, but perhaps that additional liquidity is looking at the risk that we as a bank may not take. So for us, you know, credit risk insurance is, is a central point to our strategy for origination on trade finance basis, as it is for other asset classes within the business. Um, but you know, it goes it goes without saying that we you know, we will continue to distribute on a, an unfunded basis. It, it's part of the model we, we employ. And what market development, and I think I'm going to push a bit on the technology sure. side here, are you, are you looking at or, or predicting for 2020? Um, it kind of goes back to what I mentioned a few minutes ago. I think efficiency is a key. Um, te technology has to be embraced. Uh, we are seeing more digital platforms in the market. Um, you know, we're seeing more kind of consortiums of insurers putting their, their expertise and capital together to provide more workable, um, quicker solution products for banks so i imagine where you know trade finance it can be it, it, it is a flow business it's how how can we make that flow more efficient technology will be there you know we as a bank will look to embrace it um i guess it's it's kind of moving that mindset away from the single facultative risk to perhaps more scalable solutions more committed solutions which you know the proofs in the pudding banks have been originating this for a good number of years um do we have to look at, look at every LC on a single risk basis, or do do we follow the fortunes of the bank? Do we work with people who who we have established relationships with? So I think the the consumption obviously will, will take is there for the bank, but it, it all depends on whether that capacity, that product, is being supplied by the insurance market. So uh, let's see, twenty twenty might be a, a year for for innovation and uh, new solutions.
Matthew, it's been great having you on the show. Thank you for Thank joining you. us Great on to be here. Trevansal TV. Thank you.